morning. You guys look amazing. I'm so happy to be here. A little nervous. But about 15 years ago, a lady in our church came and she asked me if she could start ladies' Bible study at our church. She had gone through a very dark time in her life and she reached out and needed Bible study and we were not offering a ladies' Bible study at that time and she found it at another church, not even an apostolic church. And it was a blessing to her and so she wanted to start that at our church. And to be honest, I wasn't very excited about it. It just seemed like one more thing I was going to need to attend every week, and I really wasn't looking for more things to attend every week. But I went along because, honestly, how can the pastor's wife not be on board with Bible study? It kind of sends a bad message, right? That's what I thought, too. So I went along with it, and we, we had Bible study for probably around three years, and then she and her family moved out of state, and we stopped having it. So I realize that at this point, you are probably wondering if I am the right person to be speaking to you about the Word of God, right? I understand your fears. So how am I the one up here speaking about the Word of God? Well, a few years after she moved away, I really felt led to start Ladies Bible Study again, which was weird because I really wasn't that into it when we had it, and I had never led a Bible study before. And so that really sounds like a recipe for success, right? (laughs) That's what I thought as well. So as nervous and apprehensive as I was, I started Ladies Bible Study. And something strange happened. It was like something caught fire inside of me. I started to get excited about it. It didn't happen overnight, but with every passing week of Bible study, I became more passionate about the Word of God. I loved doing my homework every week and preparing for Bible study. I couldn't wait to get there to discuss what we had learned every week. The verses that I read, truths I had heard preached my entire life, they all started to come to life for me in a completely different way. Everything started to make sense in the Bible. The big picture of the Bible started becoming very clear to me. I truly felt like when I read the Bible, I was understanding it. Pretty soon, I couldn't get enough. I wanted to talk about the Word of God all the time. In fact, I'm kind of still like that. So if you want to talk about the Bible, especially biblical history, I'm your girl. Come hit me up later. We will have a conversation, a long one probably, because once I start talking about it, I, it, it goes a while. So through Ladies Bible Study... I fell in love with the Word of God. And through Ladies Bible Study, I learned to love God with my mind, not just my emotions. There's nothing wrong with enjoying what we feel in the presence of God. You know, the service we had last night, you feel the goosebumps and the emotions. There's nothing wrong with that. But you also need to know Him with your mind. I want to know him. Have you ever stopped to think what the scripture means when it says that we need to love him with all of our heart and soul and what? Our mind. How do we love him with our mind? I believe that that is what we do when we study his word. We are loving him with our mind. You were created to know him through his word. That's why he gave it to us. It wasn't like I had never read the Bible before. I I basically grew up on a church pew. I knew I needed to read my Bible. But it had never clicked that I needed a personal relationship with the Word of God for myself. I had never taken the time to dig deeper into the Word of God. I had never studied His Word. There's a huge difference in reading and studying. And I had never studied. The real treasures of his word are buried just a little bit deeper than what you're going to find when you just read a verse or two every night before you drift off to sleep. The treasures are just a little bit deeper. Leading Ladies Bible Study every week at our church has become one of the greatest joys of my life. 
I love studying the Word of God with our ladies. I love it. There is just something special about coming together with a group of people that all love the Word of God and love studying the Word of God together. They aren't there because they have to be. They aren't there because they feel obligated to be. They are just there because they love the Word of God and they want to learn more about Him. So now we are about nine and a half years later, and we are still having ladies' Bible study every week, and it's amazing, and we love it. We love it. We can't get enough of it. Some of these ladies that I'm in Bible study with have been with me since the very beginning, almost 10 years of studying the Word of God together. So how did we get started? Well, I started with a handful of ladies on a Tuesday morning. You don't need a huge group to get started. You just need some people who want to learn about the Word of God. Somebody needs to lead the group who's passionate about Bible study because rest assured, one week you're going to have 15 people there and the next, next week you're going to have three. And so you need someone who's passionate about it. It did not deter me when we had three people the next week because I loved the Word of God and I would study it with whoever showed up. It didn't matter to me. I'm like, two, three, ten of you, I don't care. We're just going to study the Word of God together. And oftentimes it's the leader's passion for Bible study that is the driving force that keeps people coming back. Then we added a Tuesday night study for the ladies who couldn't come during the day. And right now, about nine and a half years later, we average about 35 to 40 ladies every week in Bible study. Sometimes, usually at the beginning of the year, we have more. Um, sometimes we have up to 50 every Tuesday studying the Word of God together. But we average probably 35 to 40. And I don't say that to brag, but just hopefully to encourage someone that when you start this, if you stick with it, this is, this is what can happen because there, I promise you, there are people in your church right now that are hungry for more of the Word of God. A lot of times when I talk about this, people are like, well, there's nobody in my church who, who would be interested in that. I promise you, there is. There are people who are hungry to be involved in a small group Bible study. Um, you know, it's Bible study, it's, it's like a, one of those big jets taking off. It takes a little while to get it off the ground, but once it gets airborne, it's a beautiful thing. Once Bible study takes off, it's a beautiful thing, and it is a blessing to a church. For the last two summers, I've done a Sunday evening study that was open to men and women, and we averaged around 60 people in our Sunday evening study. Well, doing the Sunday evening study ignited a passion in our men, and they were like, well, why aren't we having small group Bible study? Why is it just the ladies that get this? We want it too. So a man in our church um, heads head up a men's Bible study now, and they meet on Thursday evening, and they have around 15 to 20 every Thursday evening that meet for men's Bible study. Small groups are great, but in my opinion, a Bible study small group is the absolute best small group you can have. I've got no problem with other kinds of small groups. You know, our young men have a basketball group, and we've all done small groups, all kinds of small groups in most of our churches, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But there is nothing that will change your church like small group Bible studies. That will turn your church upside down. At our church, being part of a small group Bible study is becoming a part of our culture. When people come into the church, we just automatically, when a, a couple comes in or a, a single lady comes in, one of the first things I say is, how would you like to be involved in a Bible study? We have this great group of ladies. You will love it. And then I find some of our ladies and I'm like, hey, this is, this is Kristen. Come here. She's in our Bible study too. And the thing is, we all love it. So I introduce them to someone else, and they're like, oh, come to Bible study. You will love it. It's amazing. And we have this amazing group of ladies, and, and it's easy. It's easy to get people because they see our passion about it. And people oftentimes, when I'm talking to them, they'll say, you're so passionate about the Word of God. And I'm like, I am because it has changed my life. It has changed my life. Bible study changes lives. It, that is why we push it at our church. One thing, Bible study connects people on a deeper level. That's right. When you open the Word of God 
and you study the Word of God together, it connects you on a deeper level. And the second thing is it changes lives. Bible study changes lives. Becoming a student of His Word will change your life. Knowing who He is through His Word, learning His character and His nature, knowing Him with our mind and not just our emotions, it will change you from the inside out. And that's exactly what happened to me. It started changing me. In some ways, it had an immediate impact, just as you would expect. It convicted me in areas where I for sure needed it. It grew me in areas where I needed to grow. It made my worship deeper. It drew me closer to Him. But what I didn't realize when I started really committing to studying His Word is that it was changing some things deeper in me, and I wouldn't realize it for a little while. You see, most of my adult life, I had struggled with fear. And uh, if you've ever struggled with the mental assault of the enemy, it is truly like two steps forward and one step back. Two steps forward and one step back. If you've ever been in that place, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's almost never the type of thing where you pray one prayer and you're just instantly delivered. It seems like it's a constant battle. And about four years ago, my husband asked me to do one of the sessions at World Missions University. A little plug for World Missions there. Come to World Missions University. But he asked me to speak on the the topic of the Word of God, which obviously is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. And I was getting my session ready for WMU, and I was going to mention my struggle with fear and how the Word of God gives you power over the enemy. And I'm, I'm studying, and I started thinking, When was the last time I really struggled with fear? And I honestly could not remember. Because when you struggle with fear, depression, those types of things, it's not always every day that you feel it. You know, you'll have a good couple days a week, and then all of a sudden you'll kind of feel that. Well, it just dawned on me, I had not struggled with fear in a really long time. In fact, I could not remember the last time that my thoughts spiraled out of control worrying over something. I couldn't remember the last time I had sweaty palms on a plane. I literally could not remember the last time I felt afraid. And I was like, I have been delivered from fear, and I didn't even realize it. And then I started thinking, how did this happen? How did this happen? I didn't remember any special experience that I'd had in prayer. There was no special preacher who had come by and laid hands on me, and and I knew I was instantly delivered. I hadn't had that lightning bolt experience where I just knocked me out, and I came to, and I was like, praise the Lord, I'm delivered. I hadn't had anything like that. Nothing had happened. But I felt the Lord whisper in my ear, you've been hiding my word in your heart And the truth of my word has dug up the lies of the enemy. You see, when you fill your heart and your mind with truth, there is no room for the lies of the enemy. There's no place for his lies in my mind if my mind is full of his truth. God's word is truth, and it will make you free. It will set you free. His word is life, and his word brings freedom. So while I was leading ladies' Bible study every week, I didn't even realize what was happening. But God's word was bringing deliverance to my life. When you commit yourself to the study of his word and you get into the deeper things of God, it's like God sets that plow just a little bit lower, and it digs down where those lies of the enemy have roots in your life, and it digs those up. God's word dug up those lies. You see, I thought I was just studying about Abraham, but what I was really learning was that God is faithful. I thought I was studying about the life of David, but what I actually learned is that God is a God of second chances. I thought I was just studying about Paul and his conversion, but what I was actually learning, the deeper truth I learned, was that God can and will use anybody. He can redeem anyone for his purpose. We think we're just studying these stories in the Bible, but what we're really learning are the beautiful concepts of who he is, about who he is. God will reveal himself 
to you through the pages of the Bible. In every story, if you are truly studying, not just reading, but studying, you will learn more of Him and who He is. You were created, I was created to study and understand the Bible. You were created to know Him through His Word. So am I passionate about God's Word? You better believe I am. Absolutely. A thousand times yes, because it changed my life. It saved me, not just the first time, but it has saved me over and over and over. I have been transformed by the Word of God. I am a life changed by His Word. I'll end with this. I don't know how the word works the way it does. I don't know. It's the anointed word of God. I don't understand exactly how it works. I don't know how it loosed the chains that had me bound. I don't know how getting his word in me dug up those lies of fear. But like the blind man in John 9 said when they asked him who healed him, he said, I don't know who he is, but all I know is I once was blind and now I see. I don't know exactly how it works, but what I can say is I was bound by fear, and I am free through the Word of God, through the power of His Word in my life. I once was blind, but now I see. Thank you, God, for your Word. Thank you, God, for your Word that delivered me. Thank you, God.